Live from San Francisco, California, The Cube, covering Mark Logic World 2015. Brought to you by Mark Logic. Now, here are your hosts, Jeff Frick and Jeff Kelly. Welcome back, everybody. We are live here on theCUBE at Mark Logic World 2015 in San Francisco. I'm Jeff Kelly, and I'm with my host, Jeff Frick. We are getting towards the end of our wall-to-wall -wall coverage here. Uh, it's been a long day, but we've heard some great stories. Uh, we're going to hear another great story. We've got uh, Freddie Quick, who's the Director of Strategic Initiatives at Wiley, joining us, Wiley Well Done Publisher. Thank you. Welcome. Freddie, thanks for joining us. First time on theCUBE, appreciate it. Um, Probably most of our audience is familiar with Wiley, but why don't you tell us a little bit about Wiley and your role, and then we'll kind of get into some of the things you're doing. Oh, yeah, I, I, I don't think many people actually know of us, right? The, the, the thing that they probably know is this is for dummies brand, mm -hmm. but right. we do more than just dummies. We are one of the um, oldest publishers in the world. We've been around for 200 years, even longer than uh, Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah, but, That's a long time. And we do a lot of things. We have uh, three main core businesses, one around um, research, academic scientific research, one around uh, education, and then one around sort of professional development, you know, professional practice, what you do in your professional life. Mm -hmm. We are uh, a $1.8 billion company with 5,000 employees globally. So, you know, it's been, it's been interesting in the sense that um, as a company, I, I was at a conference recently and I asked the audience, how many people work for a company that's been around in the last 20 years? Lots of hands. When I asked how many work for a company that's been around for 200 years, I'm one of the few. So. <laughs> well, I would imagine being, on the one hand, a, a media and a publishing company, and the fact that you've been around for 200 years, you've got quite a lot of content from a yeah. lot of different systems uh, that you're trying to juggle and, and manage to deliver to your to your readers. Yes. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that environment from a, from a content and data perspective that right. you're working with. I mean, as, as you just said, we have lots of content going all the way back to the 1800s, right? And when the uh, internet came along, that was when in fact, one of the sort of uh, perception or myth about publishing companies that we are traditional, we are old, we are not, we are followers rather than leaders. But when I'm looking back now, that is not quite true because when you when you saw the uh, the emergence of the internet, guess who were the first people that put lots of content on the internet? It was the publishers. I used to work for another major publisher, and now I work for Wiley, and that was the beginning of where lots of content was put on the internet. But because of that, we were also the first to start discovering the problems around dealing with what is now called big data. In those days, you don't have those terms. But we have problems with lots of content that we have no idea what to do, right? And of course, we were looking for a solution that helps us to not only just sort of put the content out there, but to be able to put in a way that we can do more with it. You know, for example, to be able to reuse that content to what they call slice and dice content. And, and one of the, the things that we did was to introduce uh, MarkLogic as not originally back in 2005, very long time ago, as our content repository. So keeping all that raw data in one place, in one, pl in one repository. And then uh, a few years later, we, we had MarkLogic building us a custom application, and it's called uh, Wiley Custom Select. It is a custom publication application for people to produce their own book from the content that we have. And that only took three months. When right? you say the people, is that enterprise customers? Is that oh, individuals? I mean, This is mostly uh, academic institutions for like uh, professors who want to create their own syllabus for teaching. Okay. okay. Yeah, but of course, you know, anybody can go to the website, it's website comes to and just do it. And, and we call it, you can produce your own custom book in three simple steps. Yeah, and it only takes, you know, as long as it takes you to to do it. So and when did you dated. implement that? What year did you implement uh, that? That was back in, I believe, 2009. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so is that, that's a use case that Mark Logic has been, been kind of yeah, instrumental so, in? And, so, and this is, this is something that I, you know, because I only joined uh, Wiley in 2006, so yep. prior to that, they already had that content store. They built that um, a custom uh, application tool. But when I joined Wiley, one, one of my responsibility was to be in charge of the uh, its largest customer-facing application called Wiley Into Science. And uh, we had a big acquisition uh, of uh, another company called Black Wells, which then sort of doubled our size. And of course, one of the things that I, I was asked to do is how do we combine everything into one single platform? 
And I took that as the opportunity to uh, sort of create the next generation platform. I have to look into what kinds of solutions are out there that would help us to solve that problem. And originally, um, I was looking at SmartLogic definitely as the XML store. Mm -hmm. But very quickly, I realized that, and it was also SmartLogic saying to me, why are you not using our other capabilities? Because at that time, I was aware of the uh, version 3, which was just an XML store. But by that time, there was version 4. And version 4 comes with enterprise class search engine. I didn't know that. So we had to take a chance to not only use the consent store, but the search engine. And also very quickly, because of, of the, the limited sort of skill sets that we have there, I have to rely on my engineers, and, and they're very great. And some of them actually work for MarkLogic today, to say, what, what do we do? And they say, look, you can actually do almost anything with MarkLogic. So we also started using MarkLogic as one of the uh, application services. And we became sort of part of the application engine that we use to drive this uh, Wiley Online uh, uh, platform. And it's our largest platform. We have 75 million uh, uh, page views a year, and we, sorry, a, a month. And we have 270 million visitors uh, a year. So it's huge numbers. Right. Yeah. It's always an interesting debate, right, between a platform and an application. Right. And and clearly, these guys came into your world as really an application, but it was a fundamental platform that we keep hearing more and more, Jeff, guess, people coming on saying that we're building new products, new applications on this platform. You, it sounds like you guys are obviously uh, taking advantage of that opportunity. Uh, exactly, and that's what I meant by you know, we, we, it's a myth that we are followers because we had we realized that we had to build those, those foundational things in there and. One of the stories that I probably uh, uh, want to talk about is the, the American Geophysical Union uh, project because you know, people ask me why that was successful and I said to them, that didn't happen by accident. Right? It happened by design and it happened by the fact that we had already had that investment before, having the right content store with the right technology, having shown that we can build a custom application tool in, in, in a very soft, uh, rapid fashion, having built the next generation sort of platform to serve that huge amount of users. And finally, when we are being asked to do a challenge like this, where we only have four months to integrate, you know, 160,000 articles, you know, we had to integrate 60,000 customer data. We had to improve the content. We have to build 60 features in a six week development cycle. Everybody think, said, wow, impossible. Of course it's impossible, but because of the foundation that we had, it became an enabler. And that's why we, we, we see Mudlogic as helping us through that journey to achieve different things. So for that one, it was an enabling technology, but for the other ones, it's more about creating the foundation. Right, and are you seeing kind of a renewed um, entrepreneurial vigor inside the company now that people know that they can build some of these applications based on this platform that you put in? to really go after new opportunities, new markets, new ways to slice and dice this info. Uh, yeah, I think the, the way my, my colleagues and I were looking at the opportunity, is, it's not just from a technology perspective, it's about the fact that we, we, we want to be, we are on a journey to become a knowledge uh, company, right? Probably, I would say 10 years ago, most of the things that we do are in, in print, right? And only about five years ago, we were at a sort of 40% mark, Right, as of today, we are 60% digital. 60% of our revenue comes from digital stuff, and uh, our target is to be at 75% in 2017. So we are clearly on that journey, and part of that journey is to come up with sort of more uh, products and services, not just being a content provider, but right. more products and services that will benefit our users. And we want our users and customers to be a lifelong partner with us. Right, right on the journey from being in school, in college, part of the higher education, getting sort of materials, not just from what we provide, but online and product services that goes with it, all the way through when they're in industry and they're they are sort of working professionals, to help them and also to help their organizations with talent management, right? We have tools now that goes into sort of pre-hire uh, assessment to post-hire assessment, succession planning. So we're moving from just providing content to creating knowledge and able services. Talk about the transformation of, of going from the print to the digital the digital world, right? A lot of people are going through that right now with their own businesses and, and clearly probably cannibalize some of your own business. And I'm sure there was some interesting debates around the uh, around the table in starting to eat some of our own business with some of this digital delivery of the content. And yet it's still an objective it sounds like to make that move. 
talk a little bit about the, the business decisions and why that's an important move for you guys to go. Right. In fact, uh, just before I, I came here, I, I, I saw look at some of the materials that we put out there in the public domain and uh, our CEO Steve Smith back in 2013 he actually um, there was an article written about uh, an interview with him and the title was reinventing Wiley and, and it was a very sort of a, a good story about why we're on this journey because clearly the print business is has been sort of um, a lot of that market has been eaten away by obviously electronic uh, media and of course, you've got to do something about it, right? We can't just wait there and do nothing. Watch it fade away. Exactly. And, and no matter how hard we try, that sort of uh, attrition, replacement, is not going to be the same, right? If we lose 50% in terms of what we used to get uh, revenue from printer books, it doesn't mean that we get the same 50% from, from digital. Right. So we have to obviously keep looking at different ways of achieving that. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the strategies that he mentioned in, in, in that uh, interview was that uh, we want to make sure that on this journey, the, the stuff that we are very good at doing for 200 years, that will still remain as part of our core business, but it's no longer going to be 100% of our business, right? That's 75%. We have to look at 25% from other opportunities, from other revenue streams, and, and that, those revenue streams that I briefly mentioned earlier on will be into sort of knowledge and able services, tools and products, that is more than just providing content. Now was it, how important is that essentially that CEO mandate when it comes to adopting new types of technology, such as MarkLogic, um, does that make it a, a smoother transition when you know you've got top-down um, uh, initiative to, to make it happen? Right, I think, I think we all know that it is so important to get clear leadership because otherwise you'll be doing so many different things. And, and what Steve has provided us is, is that clear mandate about where we want to go. And as a, as a technology function, our job is to provide the best solution Right? Who knows what the solution might be tomorrow? And I think we are glad that at least we make the right bet in those early days to create a foundation. Who knows what would happen tomorrow? But at least we have given ourselves a chance to be successful in the meantime as we continue the journey. Yep. Fantastic. Well, Freddie, thank you so much for joining us on theCUBE. Unfortunately, we're out of time, and it's a great conversation. Right. Great Hopefully we'll, thank you for having me. We'll have you again on soon. Uh, Freddie Quick from Wiley, thanks so much. Uh, thank you for watching. Stick around. We'll be right back with our next segment live here at MarkLogic World 2015. You're watching theCUBE.